<laughs> well, we're actually talking about the secrets of the universe and extending discussions based on your That's right, original... how the universe is constructed, basically, mm. and so forth, yeah. Um, we, we, got, we were interrupted by the rain, and yeah. you're actually talking about specifically how to... You're illustrating reverse engineering as a process of discovering the universe? Yes. As opposed uh, to an alternative method? Yes. I, what, what we got to was this point that I was trying to make, which was... The problem we face on Earth is that we try to reverse engineer everything God's done. So, for example, when we learned how to fly, we basically tried to reverse engineer how a bird flies. Mm -hmm. And then once we worked out that it was all to do with lift and the curvature of the wing, um, then we found the law of aerodynamics. And, and once we discovered those particular laws, then we could utilize those laws to our benefit. Um, so the, the, the case with all of mankind's discoveries has been basically that he it, it, it looks at things that are occurring generally in nature and then he tries to replicate them in some way or make them simple to, to do in some way. And in almost all of our discoveries that have any longevity, uh, there's generally this process of reverse engineering by, by looking at something and examining how it works. Now, of course, there's a lot of creation we don't understand at this point. In, scientifically, we don't understand. For that reason, there's not much of creation that we've actually reverse engineered at this point. It's also a very slow process. Like, it's like getting a, like a whiteboard marker and then having to reverse engineer that whiteboard marker without understanding or without being, spe without being able to speak to the person who actually created it. So the whiteboard marker has a purpose in that it can write on a whiteboard and we know its purpose. But aside from that, we don't really know anything about it when we start this process of reverse engineering. Then we've got to go through, for in the case of whiteboard market, the formulation of plastics. And in this case, you know, the type of uh, writing material they're going to be used and how this writing, how the, if you like, the ink or, or the material that's used inside the marker to write that writes on the board, what kind of construction that needs to be from a chemical composition perspective and we need to discuss if we were reverse engineering that we'd have to go through this process of discovering so many things and then on top of that we would have to discover how to actually make that mm. as well so how to formulate it and, and mold it into something that we can utilize that's a very complicated piece of material something that is very simple nowadays to manufacture and make but, but it's very, very complicated if you think if you had to reverse engineer it from scratch. Now, obviously, mankind has done that over a period of time. These whiteboard markers have come about. We created, you know, the writing pen first and the ink, and then it, it, over a period of hundreds of years, this particular thing got developed, if you look at the history of it, where initially, you know, we, initially they were writing on papyrus uh, with, with different materials, mm -hmm. and then... Eventually they discovered ink and what ink could do and paper and what paper and parchment could do and then they went through this process of fur further development and over thousands of years we came down to this point where we've got a marker that you can actually write on a board and rub off and then write again and rub off and write again and rub off. Um, something, that, some, something that's taken a long time to develop. And that's how mankind discovers and develops things generally. And that's what mankind generally tends to think, that that's actually a part of their process of evolution. There's well, it is, a process of their, it, is a, it is a part of their process of evolution, that's reality, yeah. but it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. And it's also interesting, and if you think about it, if, if, if you think about the development of email, for example, you know, we first needed a whole series of systems to come into place computer systems, technology, wiring and all these other things had to come into place. And then, and then on top of that we had to then develop servers, we had to develop a thing called the web, then, then we had to build on that and we, eventually we built on that by adding email to the web and then eventually now you, I can type up a message on one computer and send it to you. But, but if I could telepathically communicate with you, all of that would be unnecessary. <laughs> You, you wouldn't need any of that. If I could telepathically communicate with any person in, in, in the world, then I wouldn't need to have email. And if I could telepathically connect to every person in the world, like, at the same time, then imagine that. Like, I, I wouldn't need to worry about any form of physical communication via email. And so, so what we often don't realise is that every new development that mankind has developed usually makes, of course, makes the old one obsolete. Right? 
And, and so we do a new development, the old one becomes obsolete, the new development, the old one becomes obsolete, but we needed to have the old one to discover the new one. That's generally how it's worked. And the reason why we do all of that is because we have no desire to connect with the manufacturer of our body or the manufacturer, more importantly, of our soul and find out and discover from that being how we can actually utilise this soul and the bodies that we have in the best possible method. So, so this process of discovery or experimentation to discover new things, and it, the same applies with the discovery of the universe. Experimenting with the universe to discover new things about the universe is just, a, if not more complicated, than trying to discover how this works but over it's a period of thousands too. of years. Isn't it? It seems, the way you're speaking now, for me, it seems take such a long time. Yes. You know, when if I can telepathically think or teleport myself, you know, home yeah. in an instant. Then you wouldn't need a vehicle. No. And if you exactly. could teleport yourself home carrying some bags, mm. then you wouldn't need a vehicle at all. And mm. if you could teleport yourself home and teleport all your family at the same time, yes. then why yes. would you need a vehicle at all? Yes. Like, yeah. you know, really there's no need for such things. And, and this is the thing, is that's why every new discovery generally makes obsolete mm. the old discovery. The problem that we face, though, on Earth in the discovery of the truth of the universe is that, is that while we're experimenting, we've got to come up with millions of experiments, in mm. fact, to actually determine the truth. Somebody's got to first have a seed of an idea, then that idea has to have enough passion and drive behind the idea for the person to want to follow through with it. They've got to have some faith that their idea may actually be something that can be utilised in the future. They've got to have some uh, purpose, a drive inside of themselves, like a real passion and drive to discover that particular thing. And then they've got to do a, and come up with a whole series of experiments to work out whether that actually works or not, their idea, whether it works or not. And in this process, it's a very long-winded process, but it's also a very important process. And, and it's the exact same process, actually, that, that I used in the first century to discover divine love. I used the exact same process, but I had a different focus. And this is the difference between our focus, is that we can do, we can do what I did in the first century, which is first discover whether God exists, first discover if God's willing to communicate with me, then I could ask God a whole series of questions so I guess and that's get a, the answers. So I guess that's the actual difficulty. Mankind in the past, without you being present on Earth 2,000 years ago, mankind never actually attributed to that being a creation by God yes. and all the elements. Yes. I'm sure prior to my existence in the first century, people did conceive of a possibility that God existed and God wanted to communicate with them, but they, would never, they never had a dedication to the actual process of the discovery of what that particular way or form of communication mm -hmm. with God was. With myself, uh, there's always been an underlying desire with our soul, myself and Mary's, there's always been an underlying desire to discover the underlying process by which this occurs, this communication can occur. Now, so I had to use exactly the same discovery methods uh, that a person would use to discover the universe or, or any other form of physical phenomenon. But instead of focusing on all those other forms of physical phenomenon, I decided to focus all of my energy on God and discovering through this process of experimenting, God. In the process of uh, discovering God, what I found was that as I grew in love, in, uh, I could feel myself receiving that love from God through this process, as I grew in love, I seemed to automatically understand many other things that other people couldn't understand without growing in love first. And then, uh, so then I discovered one primary attribute of the universe, that in fact, what I believe is the most important thing in the universe to understand. And that is, without understanding and receiving God's love, it is impossible to discover very rapidly anything else in the universe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right, she's our, one of our videographers. <laughs> videographers <laughs> right. and so, so, and in the process of focusing on the discovering of God, what I realised that I started to understand the universe in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. Scientists only now are starting to do experiments that actually I knew 2,000 years ago 
the truth of already. But are they attributing that towards God, though? No, not yet. No, they're just discovering the physical phenomena. For example, scientists are working on projects now where they have discovered the physical phenomena of your DNA and the emotions that you feel affecting your DNA, even if your DNA is in a place 400 miles away. So in other words, you have a feeling, and the DNA that's in a room 400 miles away has an effect. Because of your feeling, that DNA has an effect. And it's immediate. The scientists are only starting to even con contemplate experimenting with these particular ideas. But these were ideas that I discovered very, very rapidly in the first century. So I knew about all of these ideas in the first century because as I communicated with God, the source of all of these things, I was educated by God as to how all of these things worked. So 